Hey people, it is Friday, July the 16th, and it is 11.08 in the morning. I'm here at Young Street, right across from the Eaton Center. And I'll just be entering the Eaton Center via Queen Subway Station. And today is a special day because today is the first day of step three of the reopening which allows indoor dining to resume as well as gyms can get back into business and various other restrictions have are being lifted or relaxed <laughs> so here on the lower level of the Eaton Center, in my recent video walking through the Eaton Center, I didn't go through the lower level, so this time I will, and also I think I'll take a look at the food court. It's a fairly pleasant day today. It's in the low 20s, I think around 20 degrees, with very little humidity. But after uh, this quick walk through the Eaton Center, I'm going to go and walk the streets a bit and we'll walk past some areas with lots of restaurants just to see things looking somewhat normal again. People actually sitting in the restaurants and enjoying their food indoors, which they haven't been able to do for many, many months. quite curious about what the food court will look like. I think there's a 75% capacity allowed now for indoor retail. I'm not sure about indoor dining, what the capacity limit is. To look that up again but yeah as you can see they have some of the tables set up again not nearly as many as there would normally be so here's the rather large fancy food court at the Eaton Center it looks to me like I'm not even sure, no more than 50%, maybe 25% capacity for indoor seating here. But in any case, it's awesome to see people allowed to sit down in a food court again. It's been a long time coming. It was kind of ridiculous how before the restaurants were open in the food court, at least some of them were. But yet, 
after receiving your food, you basically had to take it and go somewhere else to enjoy it. <laughs> So now I think I'll take a quick walk up through Little Tokyo. That stretch of Dundas West is lined with restaurants. This is the main level of the Eaton Center. It looks like this entrance to Canadian Tire is still closed. I'm not sure what the reason for that is. It's just more one of those nonsensical things that you find in these restriction type situations. Things are pretty much fully open. Why wouldn't that entrance be open? I don't know. Let's see if the entrance to Best Buy up at the top of the escalator is also closed. No, the Best Buy entrance is open. So why would the Canadian Tire entrance be closed? It makes no sense. Bay and Dundas. And there's the street entrance to the Canadian Tire.
Well, it looks like Denny's has a patio set up. This is a restaurant I've never eaten at in my life. <laughs> And even though they're open for indoor dining, it looked empty in there, I think. <laughs> A lot of people are still conditioned to think they have to eat outside. So here we are coming into Little Tokyo. Nobody in there. <laughs> now I'm just playing the game of let's find a restaurant where people are actually inside. Man, I saw two people inside there. I see people. And I suppose it's still kind of early. It's not even lunchtime yet. I think I'll wander over to Young Street. Past some of this ever present construction. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, this is Edward Street. I recently did a walk through here to document the closure of the old Toronto bus terminal down the downtown Toronto coach terminal, as it was known. And there's another look at the now shuttered bus terminal. And this is another new building for the Hospital for Sick Children. And this is Elm Street. We'll take a walk down Elm Street. There's a little bit of a mini restaurant row up ahead before you hit Young. Never noticed this view before. Looking towards the old bus bays of the bus terminal. And you can see First Canadian Place popping up. And here's a bunch of old row homes that are slated for redevelopment. I haven't seen any solid proposals for the site yet though. And here we are at Bay Street. So look up the Bay Street Condo Canyon, as I like to call it. And towards the financial district. And look at that, people are inside Egg Smart. <laughs> Who would have thought that something so mundane as people sitting inside a restaurant eating could be worthy of a, a video. Look, people are inside and they're eating. And here's the Elm Street restaurant row.
There's some nice old buildings here on Elm. This street would be a good candidate to have it closed to traffic, at least for this one block. Just have this a little pedestrian only zone. They do have these cool little seating areas though. But I don't think it would disrupt traffic patterns too much to have this one block cut off to vehicles. Barbarian's Steakhouse. at Young Street once again. Oh, and also strip clubs are now allowed to be back open for business. So I'm sure the owners of the Zanzibar are celebrating. And even old, plain old McDonald's. You can sit down and have your Big Mac. I think this is a cannabis shop. It used to be Elephant and Castle. Unfortunately, that is no longer the case. <laughs> and it's one of eight million cannabis shops. I recently just saw an article stating how probably upwards of 50% of the current cannabis shops are probably, probably shut down because of oversaturation, which is not surprising at all. Crossing Gerard Street. Yeah. Yeah. And that's surprising that Rexall location closed down. That's something you don't yeah. see every day. Those things tend to pop up almost as, uh, as numerously as the pot shops do. Which is sad. Yeah. Like, gave me like a little bit of sass. Like, 
Perhaps I'll cross the street. Mato Pizza is also closed. There are definitely a lot more papered up windows right now than there were a year ago at this time. And this Wild Wings location seems to be closed as well. Popeyes, however, is open, and I see people inside. And Hangry Burger. Here we are at Young and Carlton. Rotation seems to be closed as well. If some of these places do not reopen, they most likely will be replaced by a new restaurant, especially when things really are fully open and back to what could be considered normal. There's no reason why these now vacant, vacant spaces downtown won't be filled up by new restaurants or new retailers. Toronto is just too big and busy. There's too many people living downtown for places like that to remain vacant. Something else will come along and fill the void. And also movie theaters are allowed to reopen, however, the Carlton Cinema still is closed. Hopefully that will reopen.
I imagine tonight and over the weekend there'll be quite the flurry of activity at restaurants around the downtown. I think many people have been chomping at the bit to be able to dine out again and not have to worry about the weather and, and whether or not there's an adequate patio. So we've reached Church in Carlton. Yeah, I think I'll wrap it up here. So, hope you enjoyed this little walk through the Eaton Center, just checking out food court with indoor dining restored. <laughs> And walking past some restaurants in Little Tokyo, along Young Street, Elm Street, and Carlton. Leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. And like and share and subscribe. And make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are links in the description where you can do so via PayPal and via my new merch store. So thanks for watching, and be sure to keep checking back, because as always, I will continue.